Hello, Paragon Reef here with another uh, DIY project from my 55 gallon reef tank. Um, this is actually still, well, night one. And uh, this is the, uh, the acrylic baffles that I cut for my uh, 30 gallon sump. Um, actually, I trimmed this piece down. This is for the overflow, but uh, uh, I'm getting ready to take the, uh, the Dremel here and take off the corners so they don't cut into the, the existing um, uh, silicone in the tank. I'm going to do some uh, some lines, you know, some notches across uh, so the water can flow through a little easier. Um, that's about it. I'm just kind of kind of mess around and hope I don't screw anything up too bad because <laughs> I've never done this before. But uh, we'll see how it turns out, and uh, I'll update you a couple times as I work my way through it. I can't really hold the camera and uh, dremel at the same time, but as much as I would like to do that, one of these days I need to get a tripod. But uh, yeah, I'm using a um, flat grinder bit on the dremel. Hopefully that works. I also have a, uh, a sanding bit and a buffing bit that I'm going to use to help make the acrylic look nice and pretty once I'm done. Hopefully uh, hopefully it works pretty well. Um, again, I have no clue. I've never used acrylic before or done anything. Um, there's the uh, 50 gallon, 55, and there's the sump there. Just uh, killing time on my day off. Uh, Alright, well, I'll uh, update you with some progress as I go. Well, I got the corners off. Came off really easy. These I'm I'm having to go on over twice to kind of get the uh, the width that I want. Um, but it's again, this Dremel's making things so easy. Let me see if I can do one here on the camera. I'll show you how guys, you guys, how this is. That's it. That's all it takes. These rotary tools, man, they make things so easy. I did some uh, custom computer modding at one point in time, and man, they're so helpful. Um, I'm gonna do these all the way across because this is the the baffle from. Um, this is actually gonna be the baff baffle going into the bubble the bubble trap, um, and then I'm still trying to decide whether I want to use this style. Or another style I saw where uh, you actually cut a slit out a little bit lower um, to, I guess, kind of keep things from, you know, I guess it keeps the flow down and keeps some of the bubbles in the same area as the protein skinner, skimmer. I think that's probably the way I'm going to go, um, just because uh, I want to try and keep as many bubbles out of the system as possible. I've read that it's really not that big of a deal, that nothing really matters, you know, if you get bubbles, but I think it looks prettier that way. So, um, I'll, uh, I'll take another clip as soon as I'm done with all this, and I, don't know, I, might, I may do that other baffle first and, you know, give you an idea of, uh, what I'm talking about on this, uh, secondary bubble trap for the protein skimmer. Uh, all right. I have gone ahead and notched all the way across the top. Doesn't look very pretty right now, but uh, I'm gonna get in there with the uh, the little sander and grinder bits and uh, buff it out and make it look look nicer. Um, this is going to be sitting like this in the sump right before the bubble trap, and on this side of it is gonna be the refugium and. This piece here is going to be on this side of the refugium. And cutting the notch out here, um, I actually haven't seen anybody on YouTube do this in a DIY setup, but um, New York Stilo uh, has done quite a few um, videos on reef tanking, uh, reefing, whatever uh, the actual term is, but um, he had purchased a uh, a new sump that had 
had this type of a slot in the baffle, and you had the the refugiums here, protein skimmers over here, and the inlets over here. And what happens is the uh, the bubbles from the protein skimmer and the uh, the refugium lift up in the water, and the the water level is above this, and so they lift up high enough. You can't really see it. My hands in the way. It's hell trying to hold a camera and point. The water level is about here. The bubbles get trapped by the plastic and don't come under and through here. And uh, that's the idea of it, anyway. So uh, I'm actually going to make it a little lower, I think. Give a little more room for the bubbles to get trapped up here. But it, it keeps all the bubbles out of the refugium, or at least a good chunk of them and I really thought that was an ingenious way of, of doing things and so uh, I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it works uh, I'll be back with you as soon as I'm done cutting this out okay this is what I ended up uh, going with uh, the original hole I thought could be made smaller and still retain the same you know enough flow I may make it just a tiny bit bigger but and, you know, actually, as I as I sand and buff it, it'll it'll open up some more. But that'll give it plenty of space above the water, you know, below the water line, for bubbles to get trapped and to just uh, go ahead and get recirculated into the protein skimmer or come off and evaporate. But they won't go into my tank, and that's the big thing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on the sanding and buffing bits and. Uh, Go ahead and buff these up, and uh, I'll do a shot of them after they're done. Um, I did, just on an off note, I got a lot of this um, melted acrylic. And it was all stuck around the edges, so if, that, if you get that, you know, and you're trying to do something similar, don't worry about it, just break it off. It comes off real easy. Um, just make sure you're wearing eye protection. You don't want to get anything in your eyes, and the dremels tend to flick it back at you. Um, well, that's it for now. All right, well, uh, it's all been cleaned up. Uh, at least a lot, anyway. I know it still looks a little messy. I'm still got to get it at the at it with the buffing wheel. Um, one thing I did want to mention, though, um, is when I do this, I I always leave this protective plastic on, and that you know until at least until I'm ready to buff, because that allows me to uh, you know, draw on it. I can a lot of times it'll protect the acrylic from little scratches. I'm hoping this is just the plastic and it's not scratched on the acrylic, but it should be able to buff out. Um, so it, it helps protect the plastic from scratches. You know, you can let you draw on it without having to worry about it still being on there when you're done. It's just a really good idea to go ahead and do that. Uh, I mean, it'll be on both sides, so it's really easy just to leave it on. Uh, and then once you're done, you just go ahead and pull it off. have to get in there with some tweezers or something to get it off the individual teeth there. But it definitely looks a lot better now that I got that off. And, uh, yeah. Looking forward to putting this in the sump and seeing how it looks. Probably gonna, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to silicone tonight or not. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Sorry about that. Camera ran out of, uh, space here. Now, this turned out really nice, except for the couple places where I, uh, skidded off there with the, uh, sander. But, uh, I think, I think once it's done, it'll, it'll work really well. I, I gotta take the corners off of this one, too. I almost forgot. Um, but, uh. What I'll do is I will finish that, take the corners off of uh, one of these shorter pieces here, and uh, notch it out, and I will show you the finished product once I'm done with that. All right. Well, here's the uh, the uh, last baffle I had to notch. Um, many of uh, the other YouTubers have constantly repeated. Uh, 
patience uh, leads to good things and I was in a little bit of hurry and you can see what happens when you get in a hurry you lose a little teeth and uh, just a reminder to me that, that I really need to slow down sometimes um, the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, take these two pieces here the two that are gonna be on either side of the refugium and uh, I'm going to spray paint them black. Uh, not that uh, I saw anyone else do that, just kind of an idea on my own, because a lot of people are talking about how they've made mistakes with um, light pollution, getting algae, uh, you know, in places where it shouldn't be. And so uh, that's what I'm going to do to try and and halt that. So uh, I'll let you see them after they're done. Okay, I'm getting ready to paint these and uh, one really nice thing is using newspaper. I can just lay down another layer of newspaper and not have to worry about any acrylic dust getting on these or uh, previous paint. It's, it's <laughs> always want to have lots of newspaper around when you're painting. It just makes things so much easier. Uh, when you're painting something uh, to keep things from running and splotching, you want to do these quick passes where you start before the object and end after. And that way your paint remains totally the same layer you know, all the way through. It's not concentrated at the ends. And so you want to do these like this. Just like this. And you do a few layers like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And of course, unless you're doing something everybody's going to see in your little OCD, I can be that way sometimes. <laughs> um, but you just take it right over, do a few layers, wait for it to dry, go to the other one while you're waiting for that one to dry. Now, again, this is the uh, Krylon Fusion for plastic. I picked this up at Pet Boys because nobody else had it really. Everybody else was using their own house brand. And I couldn't find a good color that I liked in that. So I used to work at Pet Boys, so I knew that they had the Krylon there. And yeah, you know, I paid an extra buck fifty for it because I got it at Pet Boys instead of a home supply store, but it was worth it because I knew this paint would work for what I need because everybody else is using it. So, there's those two pieces. I'll probably put another layer on them in about 10 minutes or so. And then I'll uh, let them dry and you can check them out. So, these are the uh, pieces now that they're done. Uh, not too bad. You can't really see any light through them, which is great. That's what I was shooting for. Pretty much blocks everything out. So hopefully that will solve any problems I have with light pollution. Um, the other thing I did was I took this piece of the overflow that's going to be sitting inside the tank and I painted it blue, which is you know, good color. It's going to match the, the paint that's inside the, uh, the tank at the moment. Or actually, it's on the outside of the tank, but it's on the back of the tank. So, that'll look good once it's done. I still need to carve some notches in it uh, for the overflow. And then the rest of it's going to be plumbed with PVC, uh, you know, all that. And I'm going to be doing that in a couple days once I get the stand over here. Um, stand is eventually going to be stained with the stain I showed you earlier. Uh, that's going to happen, uh, I guess, two days from now. At which point I'll be able to put everything all together. Leak test. Uh, I don't have my pump yet, but maybe I'll make sure everything holds water. And uh, you guys will all get to see it then. Alright, rate, comment, subscribe. Thank you.